okay now coming to coming to the to the uh, to the unitary transform itself <coughs> so for example right uh, so we'll start with 1d okay we'll start with 1d and naturally move towards 2d okay naturally naturally progress to let us see 2d so in a sense we will we will kind of naturally show how this extends to i mean how how this 1d can itself can itself be kind of used to used to really uh, construct a 2d basis okay uh, okay let uh, let let u be a sequence which is like again right i mean in all of this time and frequency and all right this is i mean there's a, there's there isn't anything sacred about it you can always go kind of back and forth so u u0 except that you know real and complex if you have to worry about yes then you should worry about but otherwise right there isn't anything very sacred so so we say that right so we say that you know we are applying a unitary transform okay if okay if let's say you know so so when we do v is equal to a times u okay we we say that we have applied a unitary transform on u provided a satisfies the condition that a a hermitian is equal to a hermitian a is equal to is equal to identity okay so which which basically means that a inverse is in fact a, a you know hermitian itself so as an example if you look at a dft matrix phi what is its inverse what is the inverse of a dft matrix huh no if i give you a dft matrix phi what is its inverse just simply phi star right simply phi star is its inverse no <coughs> phi star right you can you can kind of write it down hmm? 2 by 2 you won't know because it's uh, it's all real right one what is it 2 by 2 will be like 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 1 by root 2 minus 1 by root 2 but if you like a 3 by 3 right <coughs> phi transpose is phi by the way right so so only phi star the so the point is this right so 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 uh, so there are several advantages to using a kind of unitary transform because it leads to leads to an say leads to an orthonormal basis right with which with which you can you can expand your sequences and in fact all your dfts d dcts and all they are all of this nature okay they all have a basis which is actually orthonormal so the fact that a a hermitian is identity right this this reveals the fact that you have bases that are orthonormal okay now how it is and so on so the structure of that right we will actually see okay but uh, but then right first of all let's kind of let's kind of look at the look at the fact that uh, uh, that uh, right so one of the things that you notice is that if you take norm v let's say let me just let me just square it right which will be like norm a u square it right, will be like au okay and uh, right uh, right one more thing okay we will always end up using using this is a hermitian so hermitian as you all know is simply a complex conjugate transpose which is also the same as a transpose and then you can take the complex conjugate okay the order is okay you can do it in either way so either take the transpose and then takes the conjugate or take the con so the so, so the point is right i mean when you do this a hermitian right what it uh, well anyway right i mean when we kind of right uh, do it at that time you will see right just just wait for 5 minutes okay we'll we'll kind of do it the i mean so it's basically a basis for your for kind of reconstructing your sequences your u right so so you want to be able to express u in terms of a linear combination of bases and those bases come from a in fact they come from a this one hermitian they come as columns of a hermitian and those columns are all going to say uh, right or orthonormal with respect to one another so a star uh, is equal to at star right so that's what so this hermitian right people write it as h okay on top and uh, so if you see here right so this is like au hermitian au or which in turn which in turn is au uh, it's u hermitian a hermitian au and then a hermitian a as we know is identity right because that's what we assume okay because this is a unitary transform so this is u hermitian u and therefore this is norm u square right so so these so these unitary transforms are norm preserving 
okay okay uh, right they are kind of non preserving and if you if you look at the structure of a itself right you can kind of think of it as uh, you can think of let's say right suppose suppose we take a u a u okay what was that length i took uh, did i take the length as something mm. Did I say what is the length of u? Ah, yeah, right. So, so I so this is like uh, this is like length n, right? So, so let us kind of look at look at uh, a, right? Which is which will then have to be an n cross n matrix. Okay. So let's look at this guy. So, so let's say it has entries a zero zero, a zero one, all the way up to a zero n minus one. Okay, then a 1 0 a 1 1 all the way up to a 1 comma n minus 1 and then dot 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 all the way down to a n minus 1 comma 0 which is the last row a n minus 1 comma 1 all the way up to a n minus 1 comma n minus 1. Okay, this is how your right a will look and this a, a, a is actually acting on u. Okay, now, prior to sort of right interpreting what is the basis then and you know what are the transform coefficients and all right. Uh, prior to that we will kind of say look at when we take let us say right inner product of say let us say some two vectors okay, we have f and then we have g. Okay, then what do we what do we get to write I typically write this as they both of course, have to be at the same length let us say let us say let us say n equal to 0 to n minus 1. How do we kind of say write this inner product? Huh? when you take right in a product hmm? yeah yeah go ahead f f n f n into g star f n correct right g star f n ok. Now, of course, right we, we also could have said no, no no we also could have noticed that if f equal to g ok then this right in a product will give you norm square of whatever f or g right because they are both the same norm square f right if f equal to g otherwise so so if f equal to g then this becomes modulus of f n square right which is but which is but dc norm square of f right now uh, so the, so so now so now the point is this right so um, so the way we you kind of motivate this is Okay, so so we said v is equal to a times u, right? Okay, so we are kind of multiplying this guy with some with your u. This is your u, and then on the on the left, right, we have your v. Okay, so right, this is your v. So if you so if you look at let's say, so 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 this vector has what are called the transform coefficients. Right. This is your this is your input sequence. Right. Now, if you if you look at look at a kth entry here, so for example, v zero is simply the first row multiplying this column, then v one is the second row multiplying this column, and so on. Therefore, v k, right, is simply summation, okay, u n, okay, a k, n and going from 0 to n minus 1 right ok v k. So, now what we do is right instead of writing it like this we will in turn write this as n equal to 0 to n minus 1 u n a star k n the whole star ok means the same thing ok. Now, now, uh, now examine uh, a a h a which is the Hermitian. Okay, so a Hermitian, if you if you write it down, okay, a Hermitian looks like this, right? So it'll be like a star zero zero. Then what will be the next one? Hmm? Zero one, all the way up to a star zero comma n minus one. Then you have a star <coughs> one zero, 
a star 1 1 going all the way down to a star 1 comma n minus 1 and then you go on till the last column which is a star n minus 1 0 and a star n minus 1 1 go down all the way to a star n minus 1 comma n minus 1. Right. This is how your say hair mission looks like. Now, in this right let us call. So, the first column right that just let us just uh, you know indicate it as a 0 star right. This is this is simply a vector vector a 0 star let us call this guy as vector a 1 star. Similarly, some kth guy will be like a k star last one is of course, a n minus 1 star ok. So, each is simply a column vector. Right, column vector. So, uh, so the kth column of a Hermitian is a k star. So then, right, uh, clearly, what we can do is we can write your v k, okay, which is the kth transform quotient. We can say simply the right inner product of u, and also and also right, you kind of see know that uh, the right inner product is something which is kind of linear in the first variable. So this you know is linear in the first variable, and it is a conjugate linear in the second. Right, so alpha f comma g is alpha in a product f comma g, but f comma alpha g is alpha star in a product f comma g right. So, linear in first and uh, no conjugate linear in second, second second variable ok, conjugate linear in the second variable ok. Th 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 these are things that you know. Hmm? So, now, so, so in this case right what we can do is so, we can say that right this guy is but in a product of u with a k star. because if you see right that will that will mean that will mean uh, not taking summation of whatever right summation u 0 you know u n and then all entries of a star of k and a star of k already has this a star whatever k 0 k 1 and so on and then you take the complex conjugate of that because when you write the inner product right that is how we write the inner product as you people told yourself right that is how it should be and therefore, and therefore right you can look upon v k as uh, right inner product. So, so no it is equivalent to saying that a transform coefficient simply indicates the strength or indicates the strength of the component of u along a k star right the strength of the component that u has along a k star if it is 0 then it means it is orthogonal perhaps to that particular particular sort of you know uh, to that particular a k star right. So, so when you look at it you interpret this as the strength of the component of u along component of u along a k star ok. Then, then it follows that now if I am if I if I if I want to get a say right reconstruct my u ok. So, for example, suppose I gather all my transform coefficients I want to go back. So, what do you do I will say u is equal to of course, a inverse v and and this I can write because I know that a inverse exists and a inverse is but a Hermitian v correct. And uh, and you know uh, and again right out of the various ways by which okay you can interpret a Hermitian v right see uh, the one way to interpret this is you can you can get a look upon a Hermitian as as all these columns columns uh, you know what are all a k star and multiplying your v zero v one all the way up to v n minus one so I will just leave it to you leave it to you to check that this is the same as what would be the simplest way to get us write this. So, that it makes uh, you know it, it makes interpretability easier this will be summation let us say k equals 0 to n minus 1 what would that be v k correct v k a k star right v k into a k star. So, so this product is the same as v 0 into the first column plus v 1 into the second column all the way up to plus v n minus 1 into the last call right. So, so the way so, so now so, so this again something that you are all familiar with nothing new here. So, it simply means that when you want to reconstruct u then you find out what is the strength of what was the strength of u for that component a k star multiply it right weight it linearly and then do this linear combination and that and that kind of linear combination returns u u exact returns u exactly right no no this one error as long as you use all the components ok. Now, this is all still uh, still write 1 d ok. Uh, next class ok we will see how to kind of move towards uh, now slowly we will move towards how to use all of this to go to a go to a 2D transform.